Hey guys, June here, but I have got one heck of a cold at the moment, and so I decided to stick with some easy videos this weekend. This one has been requested by a ton of people in the last few weeks, and that is just kind of a walkthrough of my interface setup and my action bars. I've done videos like this before, but I've changed quite a few things since then, and I like this setup much more than previous ones, so let's get right into it. I think you guys will agree this new setup is simple and easy to use, but it does require having all 10 action bars unlocked at least to use it in the same way that I am. In the primary action bar slot, I use a combination of four different action bars. The first three are just my general DPS bars for magic, melee, and range respectively, and you've seen my layouts for those in the basic DPS videos. The fourth bar I use is an AFK-only revolution bar that I make tweaks to depending on what kind of a slayer task I'm doing, whether it's centered around single target damage or AoE damage, for example. It basically alternates back and forth between all of the different examples I gave in the Revo++ video that I did. Then I have four auxiliary bars, which is the most that you can open at any one time currently. And having items on here essentially is designed to keep the keybinds for these things the same regardless of which attack style I'm using. This first bar illustrates that idea well and is very simple. This is just all of the defensive abilities together collected on one bar. The second action bar is pretty similar. Up at the top I have all of the constitution abilities that would commonly be useful, especially across styles, things like Onslaught, Sacrifice, Tuska's Wrath, etc. There are a few outdated things on there, like Ice Asylum. I used to keep track of the Excalibur cooldown timer by keeping track of that before it was added to the debuff bar. Then down here in the bottom six slots I have the four common mobility abilities, Surge, Escape, Barge, and Bladed Dive, as well as Intercept and Shield Dome, the ancient magic spells that are relatively useful and you often find yourself using, even when you're not maging. This honestly seemed like an extra perfect spot since Shield Dome matches the colors on Surge and Intercept matches the colors on Escape and that really satisfies the OCD in me. This third action bar slot goes along with that same idea. Starting at the top, I've got the three common ring switches as well as Excalibur, and underneath that I have Rocktail Brew since you're going to be using all of that stuff with any attack style. The bottom eight slots then are just Soul Split and the Protection Prayers, which make it easier to do prayer flicking, as well as having your different boosting style prayers so I can switch styles more easily without having to have the prayer interface open all the time. Finally, this last action bar is where most of the changes that I've made since the last video come in. Here I actually use three different bars, one for melee, one for ranged, and one for magic. Basically, these action bars are dominated by gear switches, and this is set up so that whenever I'm using one particular style, all of my mouse keybinds which correspond to, for example, a two-hander switch or a shield switch are all exactly the same just by switching the action bar to a different style. Just the gear switches alone takes up about two-thirds of these bars, and the remaining spaces I use for other things that pertain to that particular attack style. Just as examples, the magic bar has entangles for doing Angel of Death, as well as Vulnerability and a manual spellcast for doing things like foreticking. They'll also often have abilities, like the unshared cooldown abilities that we've talked about in previous videos, as well as occasionally use things like Deadshot, which is sometimes used at Nex. And then whatever few spaces I had left over, I just plugged in some random potions that I commonly use without keybinds on them just to avoid the click and drag that occasionally happens from the inventory. Since I switched to this new method of having all of my gear switches on three separate bars, I don't think I've had to adjust any of my action bars for different types of PVM in a very long time. I also pretty much don't click anything from interfaces aside from the inventory and Beast of Burden inventory, so this gives you the opportunity to have a nice, really clean interface layout with lots of open space. I know quite a few people who have their entire screen dominated by different interfaces, and they get along well that way, but I prefer to have better visibility and more clickable screen space. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of how I work my action bars and my interface and satisfies the requests for this video. I didn't spend any time talking about my keybind setup because we talked about that in the manual video, and I will drop links to that in the video description. Thanks to all of you guys for watching, to Wumpri for his generous support on Patreon, and I'll see all of you guys in the next video.